Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're back out at Duelist Den. And today I want to show you a, uh, a gun that I put together a little while ago. And this particular handgun is, uh, in a way, it's going to kind of show my age. Because it was inspired by a TV show of the early 1960s called The Man from U.N.C.L.E. And if you're not familiar with it, I'll show you a little clip of it in a bit. But it was basically a kind of a secret agent sort of show. So let me show you the gun. I call this my Man From U.N.C.L.E. inspired handgun. And it's a, it's a P1 variant of the P38 Walther pistol. And it's got some kind of neat features. It's got a removable flash hider. It's got a much shortened barrel from a standard waffler. It's got the front sight moved back to the bridge of the slide. So it's a, it's a shortened, compact version of a full 9mm pistol. Uh, double action, single action. And let me just show you that it is indeed empty. So. So it's got, uh, it has a decocker safety, typical DASA gun. So it'll fire either in double action mode or single action mode for everything thereafter. This was the World War II handgun of Germany. They started off with the P08 uh, Luger, beautiful pistol, but very expensive to produce, a little bit fragile. So they developed the uh, the P38, and I'll show you what that looks like. So this was a World War II production P38, and there is no doubt that it is a much better handgun than the P08 Luger, even though the Luger is iconic. Uh, this was quite a step forward. In just a minute. So at any rate, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this gun, about how I put it together, and kind of about the history, the ethos behind it. And then we'll do some shooting. Well, The Man from U.N.C.L.E. was an American secret agent show. And it debuted in America in 1964. And believe me, it is no accident that uh, the first James Bond film starring Sean Connery, Dr. No!, premiered in 1962, and that was followed up with From Russia With Love in 63, and with Goldfinger in 64. All of those movies were phenomenally successful financially. And naturally, the TV networks, who are huge copycats, were looking for a way to cash in on that. And uh, a whole host of spy shows uh, came in the wake of James Bond. And one of the more popular ones in America was The Man from U.N.C.L.E., uh, starring... Robert Vaughn and David McCallum as the two agents. And if you never saw it, uh, here's just a little taste of, of what it looked like. So originally I had a short clip from the man from uncle here with the theme song and the opening of an episode, just to remind you of what it was. Uh, unfortunately, YouTube gave me a copyright strike for doing that and took the video down. So I'm trying it this way. So of course I told you it starred um, Vaughn and uh, McCallum and you can see them here posing with the man from Uncle Guns. And, uh, and I think that's probably good enough to do the job. Of course the man from Uncle was not the only 1960s spy show to prominently feature a cut down P-38. Uh, I Spy, which starred Robert Culp and Bill Cosby, uh, also featured a cut-down P-38 in the hands of Robert Culp. And you can see it pretty clearly in these pictures. And uh, in, in fact, this is the actual P-38 from the show, pictured right here. And, of course, another famous show that featured P-38s, both cut down and not cut down, was The Avengers, where uh, Diana Rigg 
uh, used a P38 quite often, though she used other guns as well. But I'll tell you, the P38 certainly looks good in her hands. So the P38 was definitely uh, a pop culture icon in spy films and TV shows in the 1960s. So the entire Man from Uncle gun looked like this. Uh, the centerpiece was a modified P38 with a shortened barrel, bobbed hammer, and some other changes. Uh, there was a flash hider that screwed into the barrel. There was a carbine barrel extension uh, with a silencer that went on the end of that, an extended magazine, a shoulder stock, and a telescopic sight. All I'm going to do is monkey with a base P38 and put a viable flash hider on it. So this video is actually quite different from the way I had originally envisaged it. Uh, and part of the reasons for that are the copyright strike that I told you about. But the other reason is I had wanted to do a step-by-step -step video on building this. But with YouTube's community standards these days, uh, which of which any manufacturing of a firearm or ammunition uh, is verboten. In fact, you can't even show a disassembly of a gun. Uh, if I had actually built one of these by hand, and, well, I did, but if I had showed you how I did it, um, I, would, I would probably lose my entire channel's monetization. So I had to kind of pull that stuff. So instead, I'm just going to talk to you about what I did. But uh, anybody who's reasonably good with tools can do the same thing. So I'm, I'm sorry I can't show you the shop video, but, uh, man, that's just YouTube craziness. All right, let's 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 take a look at the Man From U.N.C.L.E. gun. Uh, this gun was built off of a P-38, the P-1 variant of the P-38. So it would have looked essentially like this. This is my other P-1 P-38, uh, which is a better gun. Now, this is a later version. And the way you can tell... Well, there's two ways you can tell. This, this particular one is such an early P1 that it is still marked P38. It's not marked P1. And the reason I know it's actually a P1 is because it has an aluminum alloy frame. And the World War II P38 had a steel frame. So the problem with these aluminum alloy frames is they simply weren't strong enough to handle the constant recoil. And after about five to 10,000 rounds, they cracked, which was not good. So in order to fix that, what Waffler did is they put this hex bolt in, which strengthened the frame. Uh, it, it absorbed some of the recoil, the slide going back, and made the frames last longer. And these are good with plus P ammo or anything, just, just perfect. Now this, this, if you use standard non-plus P ammo, will do just fine. So, I was lucky enough to have an extra P38, P1, and I had been wanting to build one of these uh, Man From U.N.C.L.E. type guns for many years. I built last year, I made an airsoft version, and you probably remember that, I did a video on it, and, and here it is. So, that was fun, but not enough fun. I really wanted a live fire version. But the problem with the actual Man From U.N.C.L.E. gun is that it's a prop gun. And it was never made to fire live ammunition. And in fact, it would probably be kind of abysmal at it if you tried it. Uh, because the people who designed it were going for cool looks and not for practicality. Now, I could have made my gun a functional gun just like the Man From U.N.C.L.E. gun. Because this is a person that sells the parts for crazy high, high dollars. But you can get them, and uh, you can make it look just like that, and it'll actually fire, but it'll have all the problems I would expect to have. So I decided to do this a little bit differently. And in some ways, I made it more like the, uh, the P-38K, the Kurtz version they came out with in the late 70s. So the Man from U.N.C.L.E. gun has no front sight at all. Uh, so I put a front sight on the bridge of the frame. And that, that works out pretty well. The other thing I did 
is I used an actual handgun flash suppressor. This is a flash suppressor for a 9mm handgun. It is the real thing. I got it from Brownells. And uh, in order to make that work, I had to cut the barrel off, turn it down, and thread it uh, half inch by 28, which I did. Now, if I had had a lathe, this would have been much easier, but I didn't. I had to do it all by hand. So it's not perfectly concentric, but it is good enough. I also got a thread cover for it, so if I don't want to use the flash hider, I can screw uh, screw this thread cover on to protect it, and it also gives it kind of a cool look. Now I was going to do a video on the step-by-step -step building of this gun, but YouTube's community standards, the way they're enforcing them lately, uh, on manufacturing a gun, I probably would have lost my channel for doing that, and I decided that just was not worth it. So I'm just telling you, this is fairly easy. I did it all with hacksaws, uh, files, and a thread die. Now doing this by hand means a lot of careful work, a lot of measuring with, uh, with calipers uh, to try to get it as concentric as possible and to square the muzzle with, uh, with a steel square and crown it with stones. So a lot easier if you've got a lathe uh, and a milling machine, but I did. So this just shows you can make one of these and you don't need to have expensive machine tools. So this is it. A fully functional flash hider. A shortened barrel makes it kind of the first compact uh, nine millimeter, right? Very, very, very small, very handy. Single stack, eight shot magazine. And these were used very extensively by actual espionage agents in the 1960s, 1970s. And the reason for that is because uh, these German-made guns were not readily identifiable as Americans. So it allowed, uh, it allowed the powers that be to disavow the knowledge of anybody out there that got captured or killed they wouldn't be carrying a GI-45 or any anything, you know, Smith & Wesson, anything that could identify them as Americans. And, uh, you know, I saw these things on, on TV shows, of course. And you don't know if that's real or if that's BS, but a friend of mine, when I was in college, and I was, I was in uh, ROTC, I was in an ROTC Special Forces unit, this, this guy... Uh, who was a buddy of mine, was a former Special Forces soldier who also did a lot of work for the CIA. And he was telling me that uh, I, I, at the time I had a actual P-38, a World War II version of this gun, which was my first semi-auto pistol that I bought. Uh, and I liked it quite a bit. So we were out shooting it, and he told me that the CIA issued him these uh, in Southeast Asia and uh, in South America, he did jobs on both continents for them because they were not identifiable as American guns. So, so apparently it was true. He was also telling me that the Green Beret unit in, uh, in West Berlin, uh, which its assignment was actually to infiltrate into East Berlin and Eastern Germany and put cells together of you know indigenous German folk to be available should World War III ever go up. So they spent a lot of time on the other side of the wall and they were all armed with uh, with these, with P1s uh, going in there as clandestine missions. So this was one of the great spy guns of the Cold War and uh, as such it's got a lot of interest to me, right? So. This is what it looks like. So what do you say we load it up and go try it out? Well, for those of you who watched Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons, you will see there's an uncanny resemblance between Evil Roy and Boris Badenov, the, uh, the evil agent who's always trying to thwart Moose and Squirrel. So 
I think Evil Roy and Boris are related. They're probably brothers. But Evil Roy was over here conducting espionage against the good folks of Blymeyer's Hollow. So let's take our Man From Uncle inspired P-38 and see if we can send him to spy heaven. <laughs> Stitched him up pretty good. Oh, let's see if I can take out some clay birds with the, uh, the P-38 secret agent gun. Well, that wasn't good. I'm shooting right over him. Okay, I thought I was shooting high, but actually I was shooting a little bit low on them. So I kind of got that zeroed in. And they're all gone now. Well, that is not true. As it turned out, and I didn't realize this until after I packed up to come home, my front sight got a little loose in its dovetail notch and was moving around a little bit side to side and uh, obviously throwing my aim off. So I didn't fix it until after the shooting session, so you're going to see some remarkably bad shooting from me today, and, you know, what can I say? But uh, it has since been fixed. I got it home, staked the edges of the dovetail down in the shop, and I think everything's going to be fine. I'll run out to the range tomorrow and test it. Well, I've got three one-liter bottles of water downrange, about 15 yards away. And I'm going to see if I can take him out with my secret agent's gun. See if I can do it. I wounded that guy and then I took him out. Let me get the middle guy. Got him. <laughs> but it took everything I had to do it. <laughs> well, since this was a gun of the swing in 60s, I feel it's only appropriate to finish off with it today on Swing City. So, let's see if we can make those plates swing. <laughs> Get them! Well, I would have liked to have done some more shooting with uh, my little Man From Uncle inspired gun. However, I was limited by ammo. I only had a box of this stuff, 147 grain uh, Federal American Eagle. 
And the reason I got this, because uh, I shoot, you know, quite a bit of 9mm, even though uh, my carry guns are 45 ACP and uh, 38 Super. Um, and I might do a video on why I carry 38 Super. I get asked that a lot. But I have a lot of 9mm guns I shoot. And I reload. And I got a lot of factory ammunition. But most of my factory ammunition is plus P. And uh, all of my ammunition, my factory and my reloads, are all 115 grain. Because mostly I shoot plus P 115 grain hollow point when I shoot my, my 9mm. Uh, I didn't want to do that with these Waffler P1s because they were designed for 147 grain full metal jacketed service ammo and I thought it would be more fair to shoot them with what they were designed for. But of course even though ammo is getting easier to find it's still ridiculously expensive so I didn't buy a lot. I bought two boxes. I used one box actually for sighting this in because I had to file the sights down to, to get it in the ballpark. And then I use the box over here. So that's that's why we did as much shooting as we did. Now, what are my final impressions on this gun? Uh, they are that I liked it a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And I, I have to say, this was a vanity project, of course, of mine. Uh, you know, to build a gun based on nostalgia from watching The Man From U.N.C.L.E. and the other spy TV shows of the 1960s. So, it's kind of a toy, uh, but it's a toy that works. And, to be honest with you, even though there are probably better purpose-made guns on the market right now, if it came right down to it, this would be not a bad carry gun. I mean, I can remove this... There. And voila, we've got a short barreled, compact 9mm, single stack, 8 shot magazine, easily concealed, and full power. Right? Hard, hard to beat. This gun, the P38 P1, would still do the job today that it would, that it would have done in the mid 20th century. And it would do it just fine. I mean, it's a good DASA gun, safe to carry, easy to conceal, very flat profile. Beretta stole the action for their 92 uh, and for other models. So, you know, it's still in use today <laughs> when you come right down to it. If you're using a 92, you're using a gun that's not that far off from this. A little more ammo. A uh, few tweaks, but you know, pretty much the same technology that you have here. So, my final thoughts. I'm glad I made this thing. It was fun to make, it's fun to own, and it is fun to shoot.